Defensiveness is a communications killer. And if you want to stop being defensive, you need to know how to spot it. My name is Valerie and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I'm also a couples therapist. And I help couples stop fighting and start communicating. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the three most common types of defensiveness so that you can spot them in your own relationship. Let's start with basics. What is defensiveness? Defensiveness is this natural, normal, protective feeling that happens any time that we feel blamed, accused, or attacked. On the outside, defensiveness can turn into defensive behavior, and defensive behavior can escalate any conflict into a full-blown argument. Let's start with the most common type of defensiveness, defensive denial. Defensive denial is the most recognizable form of defensiveness. And defensive denial happens when the person who's receiving a complaint, so the person who's feeling defensive, denies, dismi dismisses, or diminishes the truth of their partner's claim. So in real life, defensive denial might look something like this. So let's say my partner is complaining that I didn't take out the trash the night before. If I go into defensive denial, I might respond to them by saying, what are you talking about? Yeah, I did. I might also respond to them by saying, well, it wasn't my job to take out the trash. Or I might even respond to them by being dismissive and saying, well, I generally take out the trash, so I don't really know what the problem is. That's defensive denial. Defensive denial is a communications killer because what it does is it shifts the conversation from the problem at hand, from the core complaint, and makes it all about who's right and who's wrong. Because when you go into defensive denial, your partner's gonna feel like they have to prove the truth of their claim. So defensive denial, nine times out of 10, is gonna lead to an argument about who's right and who's wrong in the situation. So stay on the lookout for defensive denial. I also want you to stay on the lookout for another type of defensiveness called defensive counterattack. Now, defensive counterattack is a much more aggressive form of defensiveness. And in defensive counterattack, the person who's receiving the complaint um, or feeling defensive, all of a sudden shifts the conversation to a criticism or a complaint about their partner. So in defensive counterattack, what you're doing is you are turning the situation around on your partner and you're making it all about them and what they did wrong. So in real life, defensive counterattack might look a little something like this. So again, let's say my partner's complaining that I didn't take out the trash. If I go into a defensive counterattack, I might respond with, well, you didn't take out the trash either. In fact, the whole kitchen's a mess and you didn't do any of the dishes and the whole house is a mess and I don't see what the problem is when you're trashing the place. Why should I be responsible for the trash? That's defensive counterattack. As you can see, it's a much more aggressive form of defensiveness. 100% of the time, defensive counterattack is either gonna lead to a full-blown argument or your partner just walking away from you and checking out. So defensive counterattack is that communications killer, again, because it shifts the conversation. When you go into defensive counterattack, the conversation is no longer about your partner's complaint or their concern, and it's all about criticizing your partner for what they're doing wrong. Defensive counterattack always kicks off this cycle of defensiveness, because when you're criticizing your partner, they're gonna feel defensive too. So that's defensive counterattack. Really keep your eyes open for that, because that almost always leads to an argument and increased conflict in a relationship. The last form of defensiveness I want you to keep an eye out for is defensive innocence. Now this type of defensiveness is much harder to spot, but it does the same thing. It shifts the conversation away from the problem at hand and makes the conversation about the person who's feeling defensive. So let me give you a real world example of this. Again, let's say my partner's complaining that I didn't take out the trash. If I am falling into defensive innocence, I might respond back to them by saying, you're right, I didn't take out the trash. I'm so lazy and I just, I can't stop screwing up. I do, I just, I can't do anything right. I don't even know why you love me. Why are you with me? That's defensive innocence. As you can see, the person who's defensive is still avoiding the problem at hand. They're just shifting the conversation. 
And defensive innocence can be so hard to spot because on the surface, it seems like the person who's being defensive is accepting responsibility, but they aren't. They aren't talking about the specific situation. And what they're doing is they're kind of being sarcastic and they're blowing the whole situation out of proportion. And defensive innocence is a communications killer because if you go into that mode of defensive innocence, what you're doing is you're forcing your partner to come to your rescue. So instead of the conversation being about your partner's thoughts or their feelings, what it actually becomes is a conversation about you. And your partner has to decide, either they agree with you that you're a horrible person, they probably won't do that, or they have to come to your rescue and make you feel better. So again, this changes the whole conversation and the whole dynamic. And that's why defensiveness, any type of defensiveness, is a communications killer. Because it avoids the problem at hand and it makes every conversation about something else. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, like our video, share our video, and subscribe to our channel.